Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching today's Midday Western U.S. Regional Forecast video brought to you by Nutrinag Solutions. Well, I begin again with a map I showed you in Monday's video, which talks about the flow that we've experienced that much of May. It's featured a broader trough in the Aleutian Islands, a ridge over Hawaii, and this deep trough over the western United States that's built into a ridge over the southeast. That southeastern ridge, combined with ridging here over the high latitudes of North America, has kept this pattern quite persistent. We've seen some pretty interesting adverse weather because of it that's caused a major problem with farming across the western United States. Let me show you this animation. Wherever you see the dots with the cooler colors in them, those represent time periods over the last week where we have approached record cold temperatures. Wherever you see the warm colors, that's where we've approached record high temperatures, or in some cases, both set record low and record high. Now, why does it look like this? Well, we've had this large blocking ridge over the southeast and this deep trough over the west. And that's why as you watch this animation again, which goes back from the 22nd all the way to the 28th, we can see the influence of the ridge trough system here. So the question I'm trying to answer in this video is, are we breaking this pattern down? Is change coming? Well, certainly over the last 30 days, that flow pattern has kept many out in the western United States, also in the Central Plains, extremely wet. Look at this map, which shows the percent of normal. I normally keep this map with a maximum of 200%, but as I've been saying in the last couple of videos, I think I need to change my maps because it doesn't show you that some locations out there in the western United States, in parts of the four corner states, in parts of Nevada, California, and even up into Montana and Wyoming, we have been way, way over 200% some locations approaching 800%. We discussed last week how that rain through parts of the Central Valley has caused some problems, especially with like the cherry crop. And when you look at temperatures, it's kept things very cool compared to normal here, which means we're behind in the accumulation of growing degree units. And even though we've seen such wet conditions, look, in parts of New Mexico, parts of Arizona, things have actually been very dry. And we've had some pockets, although it's been wet recently, some pockets that are up there in parts of the Northwest that have been dry as well. So is this pattern changing? Well, it's certainly different from a year ago. I mean, look at what we had a year ago. We saw our very warm temperatures in the Pacific Northwest where we were getting up close here to a top 10 uh, warmest start to the year. And things were dry in parts of the Pacific Northwest, but overall, our moisture profile was relatively close to average in terms of precipitation. Well, the differences between a year ago and now are pretty stark. And let's talk about what the changes look like in the near term. Well, the jet stream has moved out of its strong zonal pattern, which has been like this, and now it's into a much more highly amplified split flow. So the split flow, there's a large ridge here over a trough, and it's going right here toward the Great Lakes states running around this ridge over the southeast. So my main focus is, what does this pattern mean and does it kind of tell us any sort of substantial change in the near term? By the way, before we get there, with that large ridge that's coming out of Canada, expect in parts of the Pacific Northwest, all the way from you know Oregon, especially Washington and Montana, we may get some of the smoke out of the fires that are right now in Canada. Also, in parts of New Mexico, we may get some of the smoke coming out of the fires that are in Mexico. They're certainly spreading over to Texas. So if it gets a little hazy, a little smoky, just know we got fires on both sides of the United States right now. Okay, what does this pattern mean? Let's get bigger picture again here. We can see that parts of the Pacific Northwest, wow, we're gonna see this high or low pattern like this, keep the Pacific Northwest warm, see the ridge there, and the trough is still gonna keep parts of the Southwestern United States cool. But we do see by the time we get into the day five through day 10 time period, Look at this, warmth begins, above average temperature begins to return to California as this trough slowly flattens out here and gets connected with a deeper trough over the Great Lakes states. Now, California, I'm working on some new maps. I got some great feedback from you after the last video suggesting some stuff to work on. And what I'm putting in here is I got these new maps that I'm testing right now that'll actually show us the days where we're expected to see high temperatures approaching 95 degrees and above, because that's some serious heat stress. Well, the thing is, I am starting to see those temperatures early next week creeping into the Central Valley, especially the San Joaquin Valley. So keep a close eye on that. I'll get those new maps in the videos later on this week and next week, okay? But that's our temperature pattern. That's how things are changing over the next 10 days. In terms of precipitation, where that deeper trough sits and spins right here, we have widely scattered showers and thunderstorms in the Intermountain West. Much of California relatively dry, maybe some precip down here in Southern California, Arizona, New Mexico, relatively uh, dry as well. 
Now, until we break down this pattern, we could still bring in some precipitation in the southeastern corner of New Mexico. But overall, it's just going to be in the Intermountain West there that we're going to have some topography-induced precipitation out of this next system. Montana, thankfully, drying and warming pattern that's coming up. When we stretch it over the next 15 days, you're actually not going to see much of a change. Look what we see here. Wetter conditions running through here are primarily the wetter conditions coming in the next few days dry all around this and that split flow pattern is finally going to move east changing things up quite a bit here's what i'm talking about we start off here and watch as the pattern slowly shifts away from this we're going to keep the ridge in place over the northwest but we're going to get rid of this deep kind of bowling ball which we call it that deep bowling ball trough that's kind of sitting over the four corner states are you ready here comes the pattern change over the next 15 days Trough disappears, temperatures on the rebound next week for California, and even though you saw a brief moment there where there was a trough developing just off the northwest coast, I'll tell you something, that trough that you see right there, it's going to steer systems into British Columbia, keeping them away from the west coast. And the good thing is, is this ridge that you see here is going to help keep things on the warmer side and on the drier side, which is what we need moving forward. Okay, terms of precipitation. Just focusing here on the Western United States, you're going to see in this area just flashes of green. And that's just daily convective activity. See that? No major systems are forecast to be hitting the West Coast anytime soon. And if I just take this back a couple of days, when we did see that trough coming through around June 5th, 6th, 7th, it just takes a system right there in a British Columbia. So this isn't really hitting much of the Northwest. So overall, this is a drier pattern. This pattern is only going to be seeing some mountain-induced convection under some of the heating that we're expecting to see in the coming days. So if I just show you the next 10 days, notice how this map doesn't look much different from the map I showed you earlier, which was the next five days. And that's because the pattern change that we're seeing here isn't really bringing in too much precipitation. We are getting a little wetter in parts of New Mexico. And again, we just see the early in this week convective activity here over the mountains. But other than that, things are moving toward a drier pattern for us. Stretching this out and kind of giving you an advertisement to watch my long range video that'll come out midday tomorrow, we are seeing that the week of June 14th through the 21st, we still kind of pick up on a bit of a split flow pattern, but overall ridging in this part of the country is going to keep things warmer and drier. And this is what I mean. Here's your temperature pattern June 14th through the 21st, and we can see the overall warmer pattern sitting in this area across much of the Pacific Northwest. Now we will have to see quite a bit of a change in the flow before we can bring in maybe bigger ridging over this area, which will allow the southwestern monsoon to get going. So that's still quite a ways out for us, whereas in the past few years we've started that monsoon up earlier just due to some much earlier heat in the season we're talking may and june heat but for many of us this drier and warmer pattern will be welcomed as we go back to accumulating those growing degree day units and start to see the progress of our crops really take off in parts of the northwest again keeping an eye on some extreme heat in southern california next week but we'll talk about that in our videos coming out later this week with that we're going to go ahead and wrap up this forecast video we at nutrient ag solutions hope you look forward to our next western regional forecast video coming out this week. Also, we have content every day at my.nutrientagsolutions.com. We'll talk to you again soon. Thank you.